Hey everybody, this is Tyson here with HHO for Live. Right here is my gas vaporizer that I'm using to put in my car. Um, I almost have it all the way assembled, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit as to what I'm doing before I completely finish putting everything together. That way if you guys want to replicate it and put it in your car, you can. I will be doing some mileage tests. I'm going to be going to Arizona on a road trip. And I live in Idaho. It's about a 17 hour drive just one way, so I should be able to get some good readings and stuff for fuel mileage to see how much it really helps improve it and whatnot. Um, but so my mess my house wow my house is a mess um big time because I've been assembling this like mad. Made a few changes from my original design but I'll go through all the little pieces and components here to it. This is a three inch to four inch uh, sweep elbow. I don't remember what they actually call the name of it. Closet elbow or something like that. Um, going into a four inch T. On the four inch T, I have a piece of four inch pipe on the bottom and a four inch pipe on the side. And then this right here is where the air inlet's gonna be. I'm gonna have this connected to the hose going to my um, air filter by this right here. This is a three inch bushing to a one and a half inch. Um, and that will actually fit perfectly on my hose to go into my air cleaner so that I have clean air going through so it doesn't get the gas all full of dirt and stuff. But so I go from my three inch bushing to a inch and a half elbow and an inch and a half piece of ABS. Um, I didn't have any uh, PVC so I just used ABS. Then I have another inch and a half elbow tied together with an um, well these two are tied together with another piece of inch and a half ABS and then these other elbows tied together with a piece of inch and a half ABS and this right here is just a four inch rubber cap and I'm not sure how well it's going to be sealed. I might have to take it apart and put a washer or something on there just to make sure it seals good um, if it does start to leak. I don't think it will but there's always an if. Okay so this is how it's connected right here and then this right here is a compression fitting um, and it's actually my float. I got this off of a cooler. This is a cooler float valve. So what's going to happen is when the water or when the gas level decreases, this float's going to drop down, letting in some gasoline, and it'll fill it up until the point that when the float rises up, it'll stop and the gas will stop flowing. So there's that. Now this right here, it's kind of a mess. It didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it. But it is what it is. Um, I had to drill a big hole right here. After I'd already drilled the holes, I realized in order to run the power cord up to my ultrasonic transducer, um, I had to have a bigger hole. So I have all these little holes drilled to let the air through to bubble up through the gas to create more gas vapor on top of what my ultrasonic transducer will do. Um, so basically what I have here is this is an elbow and it's a slip to thread. And then in here is a mel adapter, inch and a half mel adapter. So there's the threads on this side. Um, and then it's a slip on this other side, which I put a piece of inch and a half ABS into with the holes drilled into it. And then I just put a cap on it. And how this is going to work is it's just going to go in here to this, to where this uh, piece of pipe is. Slip on there. I'm going to hose clamp it. Um, and then once I get in here, right here at the bottom, this is where I have my ultrasonic transducer. This is a five disc transducer. Um, and it produces about 1,500 milliliters of vapor per hour. So should be plenty to do the job. Um, and how this is going to work is I had to actually cut it. This way the gas flow can be, there, there can be gas underneath and stuff like that. Um, and when I position these zip ties, I had to position them so that 
there's a little notch, if my camera focuses, there's a little notch cut out, as you can see, kind of. Um, so that when I put it into this piece of pipe, these little tabs will stick down below like where the rubber line's at, so that it'll actually fit in there. Um, once I have this, so this will, I'll show you how it goes in, if I can, if I can do it with one hand. Okay, got that side in, now I got this other side and it'll just slip up in there, like that. And the reason I have it connected to this piece of, uh, this, this is a three inch rubber coupling. I have it attached to this so that it sits up high enough, um, for the gas level, cause, um, because with these transducers, you only want about an inch or two inches or so um, of gas above the little uh, sensor because it'll produce the most um, vapors when it's, when it's in that depth of water. I've tried it with greater amounts of, uh, I'm sorry, of gas, but I've tried it with, I tried it with water first and I tried it with uh, a lot of water in and it just does not produce any gas if you have a lot of water. So you have to have it down um, between about, I would say legitimately about three inches to three quarters of an inch above that little black sensor. Um, and the black sensor that I'm talking about is this little piece right here. So. But anyway, this will go in here, the transducer, if I can put it in again. Okay, and you can probably hear my wife talking about all of her stuff in the background, but that's all right. We love her anyway. Okay, and then this cap is just going to go on here and I'm going to glue that on. If I do have any problems, the reason that I have this rubber cap is so that I can remove all this and I can pull the transducer out um, when I have to replace the discs and stuff like that in it when they go bad. Because these ceramic discs will eventually go bad. But I'm running out of battery, so I better hurry here. Um, okay, as I said before, a four inch to a three inch um, sweep elbow, closet elbow. And then I'm gonna have a piece of three inch pipe sticking off here. Um, that's gonna be attached to the hose that goes into my air intake. And uh, I'm gonna have the, um, hose clamps and stuff attached to that. But I also have the cord for the transducer going up here and I'm gonna have a hole um, through the pipe and that'll seal off after the, the wire's out so that I can connect my transducer up or connect it up to my transducer. Um, how that works, there's just this little doodad here and it just actually plugs in and then there's a little nut well, there's a nut somewhere along this wire. Yeah, right here. See, there's a little nut that screws onto that to seal it. And this is an indoor-outdoor transformer for it, so it's not going to hurt it being outside at all. I don't know where, whether I'll put it inside my car or outside, but... Um, right here, I guess I better explain the fuel. I have my fuel line connected. I have it, a piece of vinyl hose right now. I know that gas can slowly eat away at vinyl materials and stuff like that, but... It's so slow that I don't think it's going to be a problem. If it is, I'm just going to replace it with a copper piece of tubing. And this right here is going to be connected. This end is going to be connected to a, a, a valve. I'm going to have a shutoff valve right here that's connected to a T. Now one side of the T is going to go to my vaporizer. The other side of the T is going to actually just go into my gas inlet for my car. And I'll have a sh shutoff valve there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pull the fuses for my injectors. So that there's no fuel going into my engine. The only fuel that will be going in is from the gas vaporizer. So I'll show you all of that once I have it all connected and set up. Um, just wanted to share this video with you guys. And there's definitely more to come. I'm gonna install it in my car today. Um, run it, do some tests, so we can see how well it works and if we need improvements. Um, I may, I did, I got all these parts so that I can make my own power supply. Um, for this ultrasonic transducer in case I don't need as much vapor as it's producing. 
what I have is I have a uh, a dimmer switch um, and then I'm gonna connect a receptacle in series with that so that the recep the power going to the receptacle is controlled by this dimmer switch and that's gonna allow me to control the amplitude um, of the transducer so it'll allow me to control the amount of gas that's produced. If I need that, I will assemble it and install it, um, but we'll just have to see. Um, but All right, well, that's it. It's Tyson again with HHO for Life. So, peace out, people. Um, keep up the good work. Appreciate all your subscriptions and you know all your guys' great comments because there are a lot of good ones. I, I really appreciate it. Keep it up. If you have any questions, just let me know. I would be glad to to post it um, to the comments on these videos. So, all right. See y'all later. Have a good one.